Welcome back to my crazy retro electronics videos. When I was going through my schematics, I realized that some of the RAM chips that I use, which are eight kilobyte static RAM chips, uh, they are getting very difficult to find. And in the latest user port work, I actually used a megabyte of static RAM and it was a lot cheaper than all of those chips combined. So I'm thinking, if I want to expand all of the RAM chips in my hardware design to improve the number of sprites that can be displayed, like the scaled sprites that you can see here in this example, or the size of the background layers, or increase the number of tiles, for example, or in just increase the, the number of non-scaled sprites in terms of definitions, or the number of palettes, for example, which I've already done on, on the uh, main video generation board. I thought I need some extra assets to help fill all of this extra potential space and then to write some code to exercise this new potential ha um, hardware design in emulation first before I go around changing all of the hardware to add all of the extra capability. So I thought, why not use something like MAME, which already emulates the kind of retro games hardware I'm looking at, and expand the code so that it can pull out automatically uh, the sprite definitions with their correct palettes and maybe also some audio as well. So the main emulator is great because it has a lot of source code. And so I got hacking around with some of the source code for the Outrun driver, which is the Sega X board and also the Model 2, well, Model 1A uh, audio driver code anyway. So I came through with these code changes. Now these code changes, the first ones that we're looking at, and I'll include the link to my GitHub repository as well, so you can have a look at these code changes too. These code changes integrate with the Sega Outrun Sprite driver to basically output every sprite with the correct palette that the game displays. So as you play through the game or you allow the game to run through its self attract mode, then it will save out every new sprite with its correct palette. This is an improvement over some of the tools that are able to extract grayscale uh, sprites, but without the correct palette. So I wanted the correct palette. This other code change is even more interesting, I think, anyway, because it interfaces with the uh, model one um, PCM hardware, the multi PCM driver, and it actually saves all of the samples that are used in music, for example, or sound effects. And it also saves all of the note events. Now, what this lets me do is that this lets me then save an XM file, which is like an Amiga mod file, but with extra capability, extra channels. And then this lets me edit uh, the music that is saved out from any kind of Sega Model 1 audio driver. The, the... So this is the code as it's running in MAME with my extra code hacks. I'm going to give you a quick example about what it can do. So the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to run Outrun and I'm going to let it play through a little bit. So every frame, it's detecting if there are new sprite definitions drawn on the screen. And if there are new definitions, new sprite definitions, then it will extract those definitions, those frame graphics with the palette that the programmers created this game with. So it means that I don't have to hunt through for used palettes myself. It will automatically save out all of these individual sprites that are visible on the screen. So it's a lot easier to have uh, an automatic sprite saving solution like this than it is to extract the sprites from the ROM images and then try and extract the palettes manually. So I'm just playing through a little bit to get some more sprite variations uh, visible. After this, I can run a small little command line to extract the binary uh, blob of sprite data that's being saved out as the game is running, and then convert it into bitmap images. 
So now I just run the command line to do that. And it's um, image magic. Image magic can read the raw data that I have output. It's just basically RGB raw data with 512 by 256 pixel chunks for every single sprite frame. And now it's kind of like chopped it up into individual uh, PNG files. And so if I zoom in, you can see that every single sprite has the correct palette. And I've given it a, a bright purple background as well, ready for transparency processing. Uh, so we can see here that the palm tree saves out perfectly adequately. And now these graphics as they are, are quite usable now for my graphics conversion tools, which will then import the graphics into the uh, Megawang 2000 Turbo Edition hardware. So I'm really pleased with this. It will save me a lot of time and effort instead of trying to hunt through for good quality graphics and Sprite as resource, I can just pull out the graphics now with the correct palettes from the game. And that will work with pretty much uh, any Sega export game. So Thunderblade, Afterburner, Afterburner 2, Outrun, for example. Now I'm going to run uh, Daytona. Now Daytona, when you press F2 in the emulator in MAME, you come up with this uh, debug menu. It includes the sound test menu. And I'm going to play the Let's Go Away advertisement music. And I'll just let this play in the background until it completes. Isn't that fantastic? So every new sample, every note event, every volume change, every channel it uses, every sample index it uses, uh, every panning instruction that was sent to the original arcade hardware from the code is now logged. And it allows my code to now extract all of this information and save it in an XM format file. And now it's an XM format file I can then load it up into any kind of like uh, XM editor and I'll do that in a second. I'm just having a look through here for the channel dump so I can see that the music actually uses uh, channel zero to, I think it was 27. There are 63 channels in total. There are two uh, 32 channel uh, multi PCM devices. I think they have 24 channels each or 28 actually, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of channels in the uh, in the arcade hardware. That's why it sounds so great. So let's run this command line now, which just basically opens that saved XM file in this, uh, it's called a milky tracker. It's four windows. And we can see here that I've got the individual instruments saved out. So if I press the uh, keys on the keyboard, you can hear the different instruments and I can choose the pitches and things like that. So it's great from the point of view of pulling out the individual samples, but if I press enter, it will start playing the music or I press the play song button. Here we go. Now there are some slight differences uh, compared to the original arcade hardware playback, but for an automatic capture, I think this sounds pretty good, right? Let's leave it going in the background.
So this kind of automatic capture will work with any game that uses the uh, multi FM, or multi PCM driver, sorry, inside main. I will include a link in the video description below to all of my source code changes. So you can also have a look and maybe incorporate them into your own main builds. This kind of thing is really very useful. It's very useful to use an emulator, of course, but it's also very useful from the point of view of preserving these kind of titles and the music and the graphics and to help people understand how these games were put together. You could see how complex the patterns were in this music. So I think we'll leave this video there. I just wanted to give a quick recap on the code changes I've been working on to help me find some extra assets to use for my Mega Wang 2000 Turbo Edition expansion graphics and audio hardware. If you like these kind of retro electronics hacking around videos, then please do consider liking or subscribing to my channel. And I hope to catch you around next time. Have a great day, evening or night, wherever you are.